Welcome to another episode of It's All Downhill From Here. Welcome. I won't lie, I'm so excited for this one. It has been years since the start of COVID, since I've been overseas to travel. This episode, I'm going to give you a brief overlook on whether or not Hong Kong is worth visiting. Bring on Hong Kong. <laughs> well. The flight over with Qantas was smooth. I won't bother talking about distance because... You know, you watching will all be coming from different countries and places. And I was leaving from Melbourne. Took around nine hours. Before I knew it, I was landing in Hong Kong. Those moments when you get to a new airport in a new country and you have no idea what's going on with the food selection. I am clearly not at home. I'm trying to pick a snack and they're all strange to me. The great news is the Hong Kong airport is well signed. There's a bus terminal taxis and a train that goes into the city, I do recommend the bus. It is very cheap. Handy to have a local with me because I have no idea where I'm going here. <laughs> we were headed to San Quano and the bus cost us 44 Hong Kong dollars which translates to roughly $8 Australian. Hong Kong is a beautiful city and is split into many different districts, all with their own unique characters and different things to offer. This episode, I'm going to be breaking down the many things that you can do in Hong Kong, the food, the coffee, and much more. So stick around, it's gonna be great. The early stages of February was a great time to visit Hong Kong because all the preparations were happening for the Chinese New Year and the decorations and those red lanterns up which is a gorgeous sight to behold. The first thing we're going to have a look at are the gardens here in Hong Kong. If you're looking for something low key and just a stunning walk, then look no further than the Hong Kong gardens. So peaceful, actually quite quiet and really gave a feeling of zen walking through them. One of the major forms of spirituality in Hong Kong is Buddhism. I'll cover a lot more information when I cover the temples in a full episode. I have to say, there is just some incredible peaceful feeling when you walk through these temples. Praying at these temples is just one of the many beautiful things that take place here as part of Hong Kong culture. Plain and simply, you just can't go to Hong Kong without seeing the Tian Tan Buddha and the Po Lin Monastery. It's an incredibly spiritual and sacred place 
for all the residents that reside here. Regardless of how you feel about coffee, it's a massive staple on anywhere I travel to. I have to say, I tried a lot of the coffee here in Hong Kong, and the standard was pretty reasonable, to be honest. The coffee that you get with breakfast was surprisingly very strong, just how I like it. If you're curious about following the great ones that I found, check out the episode related just to the coffee in Hong Kong. Now, let me show you some of the views at the incredible heights of the Victoria Peak. You can either walk up, which would be quite a task, or catch the Victoria Peak tram. Madame to Swords. Let's go have a look. <laughs> My man, Brad Pitt. While you're up there, I wholeheartedly recommend Madame to Swords. It has incredibly lifelike wax sculptures of famous celebrities, sports stars, and politicians. There were games there as well. It really is just a great way to spend some time up there. Those that have followed my channel for a while know that I love to hike. So, I thought I would go out and check out some of the incredible hikes on offer in Hong Kong. All of the top tourist activities to do in Hong Kong have the Dragon's Breath walk in it. And why wouldn't it? <laughs> it's not overly hard. Have a look at those views. Fans of hiking are literally spoiled for choice in Hong Kong. There are literally hundreds of hikes to choose from. So, get those hiking boots packed. Definitely got to mind the tides here because uh, catches you off, you're swimming back. <laughs> yeah, I'm not always full of great decisions, but... <laughs> Lucky I just beat the tide back. Totally worth it for the walk though. This was on Sharp Island. And what about a bit of nighttime fun? <laughs> well, the AIA Carnival was definitely a surprise hit. We were quite lucky, and when we rode the Ferris wheel, we were able to get a free ticket inside the AIA Carnival. But usually there is an entry cost. Another thing making a lot of lists of things you must see in Hong Kong were the Symphony of Lights. I've got to be real with you. The Symphony of Lights fell a little bit short, but it is definitely worth checking out to kind of say you've seen it. <laughs> and now for the first of three theme parks I went to. This one is the Hong Kong Water Park. Perfect for those that want to get underwater, escape the sun, and just cool off a bit. There's a heap of different water slides to go on, all different from the last and very adventurous. <laughs> I very highly recommend this. Because I was there in the winter though, the outdoors section of Water Park was actually closed. So I must have had limited options compared to when in the summer. The payoff though, were that the fantastic things that were open had almost no queues. Then there was Ocean Park, which is actually gigantic and offers a great education on animals and sea life and is so big that you have to take a cable car to get to the other side, which offers incredible views by the way and then also has some great rides and things to do over there. Doesn't hurt to stick around till close so you can check out the final show before it finishes up. And then we have 
the happiest place on earth. The Lion King is one of the best shows I've seen. Just period. And it brought me to tears because I really felt like a child again. And that's the beauty of Disneyland. It makes you feel that. The rides were fantastic too, themed to your favourite Disney films. <laughs> the little stories they tell inside their rides, <laughs> brilliant. It's a place for kids, kids of all ages. And really, it's impossible not to smile. Whether you're exploring Tarzan's treehouse, entering the world of Star Wars, or hanging out with Elsa from Frozen, you're bound to have an amazing time. And that final show before Disneyland closes, <laughs> oh, I'm just speechless. History lovers will find plenty of museums to check out here in Hong Kong. I didn't get to them all, but the ones I did see were very interesting. The Hong Kong Palace Museum had loads of artifacts and old historical stories to fill in those people coming to visit and wanting to learn more about the culture and how it came to be. The peak of the bunch, in my opinion, was definitely the old Hong Kong jail. It was free to enter, yes that's right, totally free, and it was a massive complex of preserved buildings from the old days in Hong Kong. There's plenty of interesting stories about the conditions and the way things were, and <laughs> there's a courtroom and plenty of shows for you to check out, as well as an art gallery that's actually almost as good as the paid ones. The Hong Kong markets are another thing well worth checking out if you want some great deals. Definitely, you will find them at the markets. It certainly helps to have a Cantonese speaker with you. But if you are a tourist, you'll do fine as long as you know some of the general bargaining rules in Asian countries. The Temple Street Night Market is probably the most well known when you visit Hong Kong. Loads of stalls and things to buy, but for me most notably loads and loads of street food and drinks and local cuisine. My one's got five different ingredients for her. It's got chow cha. 
filter. And, and, uh, detoxing. Yeah, mine's for detoxing. It's actually not too bad. I've always been a fan of going to international markets and seeing what they have on offer. Not to mention trying the fresh street food. So if that is your thing, definitely check it out. But what about the beaches of Hong Kong, I hear you ask? <laughs> well, you certainly don't hear too much about beach and Hong Kong. Ah, oh, the water temperature is perfection. Ah, <laughs> oh, Hong Kong, why are you so lovable? I can confirm, they impressed the hell out of me. Have a look at some of the ones I visited. What about when the weather's lousy in Hong Kong? What then? <laughs> well, there are plenty of activities indoor to keep you entertained until the sun comes back out. Whether that's ice skating at Mega Ice, doing some VR, which is always fun. Shooting some hoops at the arcade. Oh, this one was a gem. This was a series of indoor mega games. I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> it really was so much fun. And <laughs> we were laughing the whole time. Definitely could take the whole family there, your partner, whoever. I think it's fun for all ages. Loads of variety too. Then there was Rise, the indoor trampoline center. Loads of trampolines. And believe me, you can jump so high. Not to mention an obstacle course and loads of those foam pits to dive into and struggle your way out of. Another of the more peaceful experiences in Hong Kong is definitely a day trip to the Taiyo fishing village. You can either hike in there, which is what I did, or you can catch a boat in. And I'm pretty sure there are buses there as well. So there are plenty of options on getting there. When you get there, there are markets. You can see how culturally they survive there. And it's just a really interesting place to visit. There are also temples as well. Don't forget to grab yourself some homemade brews, teas, and some of the foods that are unique to Taiyo Fishing Village. Now it's time for one of my favorite things about traveling. I'm sure everyone feels the same. Whenever you go to a new country, it's great to get lost in the different types of foods they have, the different drinks, and just enjoy them, knowing that you're going home to something completely different. Hong Kong in particular has incredible variety. Honestly, I was telling people that you could literally go to a different place every night for a year and be still ha tasting different things every day. 
garbage juice. That's the best I can do. It smells like garbage juice. Tastes delicious. Mm. Whether it's stinky tofu, which really wasn't bad, <laughs> hot pot, Korean, Hello Kitty, McDonald's, for this brothel, it's good bag, spot on. Oh my god. What's oh, crispy? Oh my goodness. Seriously. Oh my god. Oh my god, Cruffle. Just look it up when you get there. And you can thank me later. No matter what it was, the foods just kept on delivering. Again and again and again. Honestly, I do not think that I had a single bad meal in Hong Kong. Not one. That's pretty rare. I mean, have a look at this variety and the quality. I'm going to go into a lot of detail in a separate episode with all the foods, but for now, take it from me. The food is absolutely top notch. And that brings us to the end of the Hong Kong summary video. Like I mentioned, this is just a summary to answer the big question. Is Hong Kong worth visiting? The answer is a resounding yes. <laughs> Book those flights and get down there. There's heaps to do, incredible food, and the views and sights out here in nature. <sighs> They're really a sight to behold. Like I mentioned, there will be different episodes detailing certain segments of Hong Kong and will give you a much firmer idea of how to go about seeing these sites. Aussies, see the resemblance? Nah, shut up. Hong Kong delivers heaps and heaps of quality things to do. The food's great, the hikes are interesting, there's loads of indoor activities and some of those views on the lookouts like Victoria Peak and the fishing villages of Tayo. It just keeps on delivering. Hong Kong is well worth your time. I hope you enjoyed the episode and if you do visit Hong Kong, make sure you comment below and let me know how your experience there was as well. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for many more experiences coming related to Hong Kong.